If you ever opened up your deck to change or mod something, chances are pretty high that you swap the deck's analog sticks. Every analog stick using variable resistors is prone to stick drift at some point in its life. It's just a matter of time. Not a big deal as the deck's analog sticks are very easy to swap, but what if you would only have to swap them once, ever and then never again? Hall effect joysticks promise to never ever suffer of drift as the variable resistors who determine position by physical contact are replaced with magnetic sensors that only sense the position of the joystick within a magnetic field. Therefore, no physical contact and like that, nowhere at all. Well, the joystick's mechanical build structure is still all physical and it is moved constantly, but if you don't torment it in a bad way, it should last a long time. On the market today, there is obviously the biggest player, Gullikit offering drop-in solutions for the LCD Steam Deck, providing both controller types, the MEDA and MHDA, which you can select by adjusting a tiny little switch on the PCB itself. It also features a hardware calibration button, which sounds great, but it isn't really. More about it later. By now, they even come with the top thumbstick caps included, which also takes out you having to desolder a wire responsible for the capacitive touch function from the Gully Kits PCB. They also work great for the biggest part. You won't even recognize much of a difference compared to stock in most cases. They do use a stiffer spring, so pushing the analog stick is a bit more prominent compared to the original thumbsticks. But there is also another play on the market. Not a lot of people heard from Alec Gear. You may be heard of them from time to time as some users may claim they are better than Gully Kit. So let's find if it really is the case. First off, it's size. Me personally like doing a lot of modding by now, I often ran into the problem of the joysticks being too close to the top shell when mounted to third party shells, especially with extreme rate shells. I often have the problem with thumbsticks half dome. Uh, getting in contact with the shell. It's even worse when I painted the thumbstick cap, which leads to the color literally being shaved off because it is too close to the top shell and that of course looks awful. When doing some measurement it quickly comes to light that the gully kit as well as the alec gear are taller than the original, uh, original thumbstick. By having used gully kit extremely pretty much exclusively before I already had to solve this problem, by either filing down the post of the thumbstick cap, which is not very nice, or the non-destructive version 3D printing a little shims with a height of 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters to put on top of the screw holes, getting the needed distance through the thumbstick so they can move freely. I also showed it in, an in another video of mine, I can link it below in the comments. I was surprised by the Alec Gear thumbstick using the exact same shims for the same purpose being already applied to the thumbstick's PCB board. Funny enough, you cannot see them on their Amazon listing, so when you check the pictures, so I can't tell when they added them, but I guess it must have been not too long ago. The shims are removable, so when you use them on a stock deck, the shims in my case were never needed, as the thumbsticks could move freely without the extra distance. The best way is to find out by simply applying them to the deck, tighten the screws and checking the gaps between the half dome of the thumbstick cap and the edge of the hole in the front shell. The thumbstick caps stick through. Uh, if the gap is noticeable bigger, you can safely remove the shims and fit them again to check clearance. Let's now get to the biggest and pretty much only downside of the Ella Gear Hall Effect joysticks. The fact that you have to use the old thumbstick caps that you need to desolder from the old PCB. Where the gully kit is a simple drop-in making it super convenient to swap it against the original, the Ella Gear needs you to do some desoldering. If that one is out of the way, the Gully Kit pretty much has nothing against the Alec Gear. You may be saying, but the Gully Kit also features a hardware calibration button, which is which the Alec Gear doesn't. Don't get me wrong, but that button is absolute BS. I don't even want to know how many people forgot to press the button before closing the deck up and reopen it just to do so, even though there, even though there's a so much better and simpler way. The description from Gully Kit tells you to press the button once the deck is switched on and before you close it up again. When you then check the calibration in the settings, the stick most likely really never centers perfectly. 
Uh, now you would have to open it again uh, if you already close it up. Many people did that, including me, myself. Uh, you then would have to move the stick, that's how they describe it, you have to move the stick away from the center in the opposite direction at the same amount it is like missing the perfect middle and then at the same time press the calibration button again to compensate for it. This is absolute BS and it's so hard to do and flimsy, forget about that. You actually never ever have to touch that button. It, it doesn't matter if it's Alec Gear, the original one or Gully Kit. Um, and I guess that's what the engineers of Alec Gear must have thought when they created theirs. It's so much simpler. You just boot into desktop mode, open console and type thumbstick underline cal. And the, then, then the following uh, on-screen instruction uh, will come up that tells you what to do. Uh, it's like don't uh, touch the thumbstick at all, press A. After that one is done, it takes the values. Then it tells you to uh, circle both thumbsticks to full circles and then press A again. Done. Perfectly centered thumbstick. Like, spot on. Don't even bother with that stupid switch at all. This this works for all thumbsticks. Like I said, no matter if it's like stock or any of the Hall Effect sticks from third party producers. Another nice touch of the Alec Gear is that the two different controller types are clearly written on the PCB. So you, no need to check up A or B like it's on the Gully Kit where you have to find out first what A and B stands for. Um, another little detail is that like on the original Thumbsticks PCB there are arrows pointing at the holes a screw needs to go in. It's not a thing as well on thing. Uh, it's not a thing on Gully Kit ones. It's not, it's not a big uh, issue but it's, it's nice to have, you know. And now we Gum, we come to the most interesting point of them all. Square gate versus circular gate. When you use original thumbsticks, you can check the dead zone and how the system recognizes position in the options. When you move the original stick in full circles, the point of the screen also runs along the most out of frame, forming a perfect circle. Doing the same thing with a gully kit hall effect sensor looks completely different. Painting a square with rounded edges, overshooting the border of the round circle by a lot. Exactly that is the biggest problem with gully kit. In software, the showed position on screen reaches the border of the circle way earlier than it should. Even so, the physical stick itself doesn't hit the border of the shell at all at this point. That means that on a less travel way, you are up to 100% range way faster than with the original stick, making it much harder being precise. This will be of course more or less noticeable depending on what sort of game you play. The Alec Gear performs exactly the same as the original thumbstick, drawing a perfectly round circle. This alone can make all the difference. Oh, and we're not done yet. On the Alec Gear comparing the X and Y responsible Hall Effect components on the PCB, they are completely enclosed, while the Gully Kit features a weird bump that you, that can cause uh, that weird clicky sound some users uh, get when you move their thumbsticks to a certain position. Uh, what's happening is that the cable responsible for the, capaci the capacitive touch uh, function gets caught up by the sharp corners of the bump and once it overcomes that it makes it weird almost not noticeable clicking noise that has driven some people almost mad as they could not figure out what the cause of it was. That's why it's very important to test movement of the replacement sticks before putting them in, making sure the cable can move freely and not getting caught up anything, uh, at anything while doing so. Uh, one more thing is the ribbon cable connector on the PCB. On the, on the Alec gear, the ribbon cable goes in super smooth, while on the Gully kit you have to force it in pretty hard, as the little hook on the, on the side are kind of too big to fit, so you have to force it in, which almost damaged those little hooks. Not a smooth process at all, so well done uh, Alec Gear for using way better ribbon, uh, way better ribbon cable connector. Um, one more thing is price. Uh, wow, this is this is quite a, a hefty one. I got a pair of brand new Alec Gear thumbsticks for 20 euros, while the Gully Kit is almost pretty much 30 euros. Um, sadly, they are not compatible with the OLED, but for all LCD users out there with the chance of doing one simple solar spot, it's a no-brainer. The Alec Gear Hall Effect sticks are better in every way and a whole lot cheaper as well. 
Oh, and they also come like with a screwdriver, tweezers, and the plastic opening tool. So that's not bad at all. 